Okay, Psalms 146. Praise ye the Lord. Not PTL. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. PTL and OMG, all they're just non-biblical terms. God does not need to be shortened. And when you praise anyone or anything more than God, you've sinned against God. God is worthy of our praise. Oh, my soul. It's your eternal being. If your soul is going to heaven because of Jesus, you ought to be praising the Lord. You ought to be thanking the Lord. You ought to be showing the Lord gratification. While I live, will I praise the Lord? Got it? There's no retirement. in your lifetime to give up on the Lord and not praise Him. And as a matter of fact, too, you know, when you're saved, we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. We're going to go praise the Lord in, in our soul. With the heavenly hosts that are in heaven right now, praising God. But while you're, you're breathing, I don't care what condition you are, where you are, hospital, nursing home, wheelchair. If you're living and breathing, praise the Lord, and that also goes for the unsaved. Well, how can the unsaved praise the Lord? Get saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, obey God, and then praise the Lord. And the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, is Lord God, Jehovah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not no other God, small G-O-D, small G-O-D-S. And it's not praising the God of yourself and, you know, the excitement of service and worship. That's baloney. I will sing praises unto my God, while I have any being. Are you singing to the Lord? I don't know the words. You don't have to know the words. Make up your own words. Who says it has to be a hymn? You want, you, you want to do something? Do what I do. Get classical music. Get And you get, get them on uh, YouTube. One hour of instrumental hymns, piano, strings, however you like it. Play them, read your Bible, and sing your own words to God. Make a new song. And no one needs to record it. No one needs to write it down, but God is writing it down. God's recording it. While you have your being, while you're living. Put not trust in princes. Oh boy, here we go. You know what princes are? They're the understudies of the government, of the king. They're political. There are people who are involved in government. The Bible, the Bible outright says, do not put your trust in Democrats, Republicans, so I don't offend you. It says not to put trust in Republicans and Democrats. You're not to put trust in man. Uh, I'm going to stop right there. We'll move on. Nor in the Son of Man. Now, that's not Jesus Christ. Though a particular expression used quite often for Jesus. That's a Son of... Are you going to put trust in somebody that's born of a woman and a man? You sin. Why oh, and for were they born of a man and born of a woman? Oh yeah. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're putting your faith and trust in a sinner. Well, 
you know, I go to church and my priest, he absolves my sin. Was he born of a woman? Yeah. Okay. He's born into sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Put your faith and trust in the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. In whom there is no help. The government and man cannot help you. You got it? That's Bible. Let's read it together now, kiddies. Come on. Psalm 146, verse 3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help. I am not to put my trust in any man but the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And when I go against the Lord and put my faith in any man of any classification, I have sinned against God and I need to confess my sins. For God is able to, to, to forgive my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness when you put your faith and trust in another man that can also be your pastor, your spouse your children, your boss, your sports, your movies, your television, your radio, your spiritual advisor, your horoscope, your tea leaves. Well, I, Nancy Reagan would not have anybody in the White House do anything without her consulting her spiritual advisor. Yeah, I kicked that woman out of the White House. Say, oh, that's right. We're not a Christian nation no more. The moment we allowed Nancy Reagan and her spiritual advisors in the White House, that's what, that was a nail in the coffin to say we're not a spiritual nation no more. We're not a nation under God because the movements of the president and, and the Secret Service could not have been done without Nancy saying, hey, let's see what my guidance say. Without prayer, without seeking the Bible. Sally, please do verse 4. Okay. His breath goeth forth. You breathe. He returns to the earth. Oh, his breath dieth. You get, in the, you get in the confessional booth, you get in there, you kneel down, and that other guy's over there, he's probably writing everything down, and you're confessing all your sins. He's going to die. And you're going to bury him. And he's not coming up from that grave like Jesus Christ. There has been no king but Jesus. There has been no president. There has been no boss. There's been no sinner put in a grave that has come out of that grave. Because they're all sin come short of the glory of God. My God, who is sinless, holy, and righteous, has died for our sin. In three days and three nights, according to the scriptures, <coughs> according to the scriptures, came out of the grave. That's no ordinary man. That's the man that Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in. That's God. I know they try to, on radio, they try to resurrect Ronald Reagan. Ain't gonna work. And that very day, his thoughts perish. A dead man don't think. How logical. Don't go walking up to a dead man and say, what do you think I should do? All right. You go to a priest, you go to your guru, you go, and if it's not the Bible, I'm going to put all faith and trust, and one day that person's going to die. Christ sits on the right hand of Oh, you want to be happy? That has the God of Jacob for his help. Look at verse 3. Son of man, prince is no help. God of Jacob our help. Alright, so what's wrong with Allah? 
Allah is the God of Ishmael, the Arabian. Allah is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What's wrong with the Pope? I don't know where he comes from, but he's not the he's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's a Gentile. Most of them are Polish. Polish is not not Jewish. I'll tell you how you know Polish is not Jewish. Polish, P-O-L-I-S-H. Jewish, J-E-W-I-S-H. See, they're not spelled the same. Logic. That's why they taught us spelling. We're all looped together. We're all one. And somebody surgically removed your thoughts and your brain. God of Jacob, capital L, capital O, capital R. Capital D, Jesus Christ, who is God, is our only help. You know, it says in the gospel that Jesus sent out the twelve, including Judas, and they went out and healed. They even went out and raised the dead. And they cast out devils. Find me one place in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Give me the chapter and verse number where the people came up to one of the disciples. I didn't say the book of Acts. You know, they overshadowed Peter's shadow and Paul. I didn't say the book of Acts. I said, when Jesus was alive on this earth, tell me one time, one person that went to Peter, James, John, Andrew, and all the rest of them. They didn't. Because God was manifested in flesh through Jesus Christ, and he was their only help. Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes and high priests couldn't help them. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. Got to be your God. But it has to be your God. If God is not your God, he's not the God of Jacob, you're not going to be happy. Oh, I've got a happy life. When you drop dead and you wake up in hell, and Jesus tells you, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And you go off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. You will have no happiness. And again, it's not, the, it's not Allah. Because happy is he that has the God of Jacob. Allah is the God of Abraham, Ishmael, and then all his children. Which I don't care about. I care about the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Again, the Pope, he's Gentile, doesn't even fit in there. Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, and Mary Baker Eddy, they're all American. They definitely don't fit. Big fat Buddha, he ain't Jewish. What sets aside religion from Jesus Christ? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Psalms 146, verse 5. And he has to be your God. I think Jesus was a good God. I think, well, I think God, you know, he, I don't care what you think. Your thoughts are going to be dead when you die, verse 4. You can think whatever you want about Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus with your heart and trust with him, with your soul, you're going to die in all your thoughts on how wonderful Jesus was. We'll just be cast into hell with you if you have not believed. Verse 6. Which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is therein is. Alright, so again. What separates your religion from ours? My God created everything. Charlie Darwin created nothing and witnessed nothing. And when he died, all his evolutionary thoughts died with him. Think about that. When everybody who was taught evolution, when they died, evolution died with him. My God created everything. My God is the creator. We are his creation. 
I don't know what the, what the Muslims say about Allah in creation and all that. I don't get involved in that. But whatever they say, he's not the God of Jacob. He has to be the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. He has to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has to be your God. He has to be the creator. Oh, I'm a theistic evolutionist. And I'm a Christian. And you're full of baloney too. Somebody get the mustard because there's a lot of baloney. And baloney is unclean meat. Which keepeth truth forever. That definitely rules out the Pope and all religious leaders. You can't even get, I don't know how many popes there are, who cares how many popes there are. You can't get one pope agree with an old pope. There's been popes that have disagreed and changed the doctrines of the Catholic Assembly. One pope says there's a purgatory. Another pope says that, you know, they closed purgatory. And then another one opens purgatory. Also now Mary's never sinless. No other pope said that. That's the thing. Take the Mormons. All right, it says truth forever. You got the Mormons with a group of people written in the Book of Mormon that has no archaeological evidence ever to be found and will never be found in the United States. Those names of people are non-existent in the Book of Mormon. That's a lie. And yet archaeology has and is and will always prove the names, the people, the cities, and the events of the Bible because the Bible is true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Plain and simple. Jehovah Witnesses lied to you. They proclaimed that God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God. That's a lie. That's not the God you're to trust in. If you are involved in any religious system and they've had to change their doctrine, teaching, I'm trying to think of the other word there. Um, just read it today. Traditions. Then that's a lie. That's not who the God of the Bible is. Textbooks. Every, I think someone told me every four, every four or six years, they rewrite the textbook. Number one, they find new lies they got to write about. Number two, they can build the schools again for another pocketbook thing. And they got to they got to rewrite the lies because Baptist preachers, Baptist men who preach the Bible, counterfeit their teachings. With the truth of the Bible. Oh man, we got it. I mean, Catholics now know how to answer, call no man your father. They've got an answer for that now. Because we showed them the truth in the scriptures. So, which made heaven and earth. John chapter 1 says that Jesus. And all that therein which keepeth truth forever, Jesus said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth. Who are we talking about? The God of Jacob, verse 5. Guess who that God of Jacob is? Jesus. He came unto his own. Verse 7. Which executed judgment for the oppressed. Oh, be the person that's oppressing. We'll be, well, just put it this way. Paul's on the road to Damascus. I mean, he's killing Christians. He's putting Christians in orders to be dead. He's locking them up. He's beating them. He, he's, he's whipping them. He's just treating them with all kinds of torture. And Jesus said to Paul, why persecute thou me? You know one of the things that keeps me from getting angry when I'm street preaching? And they get in my face and they cuss me out, whatever they do. You know what gets me calm? 
I look at them and know you're not doing it to me. You're doing it to Jesus. And I, sometimes I say something, something I know they don't understand. Woe be to the Christian that oppresses another Christian. One of the things God hates in seven things is when he so when somebody sows discord among the brethren. Are you oppressed? God will judge those that oppressed you. Well, it hasn't happened and that person died. Judgment has not been set forth yet. Whether they're saved at the judgment seat of Christ or they're lost at the great white throne judgment, there is a day of reckoning. I said something the other day and a couple of people were like, wow, to think about it. Let's say you got a Christian who loves the Lord, loves the Word, and does what the Bible tells him to do. He, I mean, he's a sinner. He, he sins. But he tries. He witnesses. He reads his Bible. He studies his Bible. And he's got a Christian that mocks him. He's got a Christian that talk about him. They badmouth him. I've had it happen many times. They, they um, gossip about him. They try to put him down. They even try to stop him. They do everything against that Christian in the Word of God. They oppress the Christian. And the say they're saved themselves. Would it be interesting for God to judge that oppression by... He calls that Christian up. He says, well done. Here's your crowns. Here's your city of inheritance. Joe, come in. You oppress that guy. You made fun of that guy. You try to shut that guy down, you, Joe. That guy's in charge of that city. Joe, you're under that guy. Whoa! I don't know if that's how it's gonna happen, but man, that's an ego breaker when you guys sit under the person that you've been ranking on. Imagine all the people that made Paul so mad. Say, Have I become your enemy because, because I tell you the truth? Imagine those people being put under Paul in the cities that he gets. The saved ones. The saved ones that don't get no crowns, don't get no rewards, don't get well done, don't get an inheritance, are put under the ones they harass. We'll be the pastor of the church that does the same thing to somebody who, who's trying to serve the Lord, but you know, his scholarship and his authority and all that. He's just, buddy, get underneath that Christian. They'll all be under Jesus, which giveth food to the hungry. I earn my living, I earn my check. The government gives me a check. Jesus even said, God feed it. God give us the rain on the just and unjust. I preach at a farmer's market and there are times I'll say to him, I bet you don't even thank God for what you're getting and what you got. You are commercing money that God has given you. I bet you don't even thank God for the money you're getting and you're going to take that fruit home and I bet you're not even going to thank God for eating it. The Lord loosens the prisoner. I know Fox's Book of Mars, there are Christians who died in prison. Yeah, but they're free now, aren't they? You see, today's Christianity, we want it here and now. I don't know how anybody can talk about the life of Paul that had prosperity gospel. When Paul came to the end of his life, he said, bring me my books and parchments. Verse 8, the Lord Jesus Christ. They will mock on the Jehovah Witnesses. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, raises them 
that were bowed down. There was a woman, I forget which gospel, she was bowed down. And the Lord healed her up. The Lord healed her up. And then the Pharisees are set. One of them groups got all angry because he did it on the Sabbath. Okay. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, D, loveth the righteous. Okay, who in the Bible has opened up the eyes of the blind? Name one person in the Old Testament that's done it. I'll wait. Oh. Okay. All right, who opened the eyes of the blind in the gospel? Oh, Jesus. Again, who took that woman and unbent her, her bent condition? Jesus. And he healed many others. And I guarantee there were a lot of people bent over and, and had canes and not used them no more. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, right? Well, the Gospels say capital J, E, S, U, S. Let's, let's read verse 5. Happy is he that has the God, capital G, O, D, of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, his, capital G, O, D, verse 8, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, raises them that were bowed down, capital J, E, S, U, S, is God. What are you going to do with that? There it is. Jehovah Witnesses are liars because they don't read and study their Bible. The Lord preserveth the stranger. That's me. Because the Jews rejected the Messiah, God went forth to the Gentiles. Paul said at one point, I'm done with you guys. I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm preserved forever in heaven through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. And the Old Testament, when when that is, the, it was taken for granted in the Old Testament that children that didn't have a father and widows that didn't have a husband, they were just taken advantage of. It's sad. But it happened. And God looked at it and said, I'll take care of that. Many evil and wicked men, both Testament, have done violence and suffering to other people. And they died thinking they got rid of it. Thinking they got away with it. They're going to die thinking they got rid of it. Thinking that you know, they got away with it. And man, they're going to face God one day. In Matthew chapter 12, the Bible says that Jesus said, Every idle man shall give an account. Of every, I mean, every idle word shall a man give an account. Man, if you're going to give an account for every stupid thing you said of no value, or if it did have value, you're going to give an account how you treated others. And if you do it to a Christian or a fellow believer in God in the Old Testament, Take the words of Jesus. Why persecutest thou me? You in big trouble. But the way of the wicked, he turned his upside down. Oh, I know people, they die. They, yeah, they die, but wait to the judgment. That wicked man, let's say he's got all the riches. Let's, let's take the wicked. I know, I know, I'm just saying. Taking one of those, the Arabians over there in the Middle East with the oil fields. Man, he's got a car for every day of the week. Man, he's got camel. I mean, he, I've seen some pictures over there. I mean, they got in, in their mansions these beautiful uh, pools. And it's not a pool, it's a lake. Man made lake. 
I seen a picture one time in the middle of the desert. This guy has his own little ski loft. I've seen pictures of some of their malls over there. Like, wow. There's amusement parks in their in their malls. And not just an itsy bitsy amusement park. A, a, a good. You take all that money. And when, and when they dine at their feast, I mean, it is the best food. It is the best plates, the best everything. That, that man dies without Jesus Christ and he wakes up in hell with absolutely nothing. Not even clothes to cover him. And he has no name. That turned your world upside down. And then you stand before God, Jesus Christ, and he's not Allah. And he tells you to go into the lake of fire that burneth forever. That turned your whole perspective over. After you bow down and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. When you gotta deny the Pope, you gotta deny Allah, you gotta deny whoever you believed in. That turned your life upside down to the second advent. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Gee, I wonder who the King of Kings is and the Lord of Lords is. Who's gonna sit on David's throne that Gabriel told Mary? Can I say it? Come on. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jesus. Even thy God. Oh, that really blew it out of the water. God, God the Spirit, God the Almighty Father. It's not coming down to reign on David's throne. But he's coming down to reign on David's throne in Jesus Christ. Who has to be God. Unto all generations. Oh Zion. That's, that's where we're all going to be. you got the dumb of the rock there right now. I can imagine God taking that rock. Picking it up and just chucking it. Is there a rock that's too heavy God can't... If you're going to take that dumb of the rock, get out of here. Their rock is not as our rock. I can imagine Jesus coming back on the horseback. He's got the church behind him. We bring in Israel. We come in cross where, where Joshua crossed. We come to Zion, and there's that... Hey, guys, look at that. Get that thing. Joshua, where are you? I got another rock for you here to pick up. Get that thing out of here. Want me to put it in the Jordan? No, just cast it off in the lake of fire. All generations. How about this? Praise ye. Not praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. They got churches where they got praise teams come in. They hire praise team. You praise the Lord. Don't pay somebody to do it. They may not be saved. 